Um, this is another question in English. Can you testify that there is no origin to our past life, scientifically? Another good question. I think the banyan tree at Bodh Gaya appeared during Ashoka, if I'm not mistaken. You shed a, can you shed a light on this, please? Very good question. Tewanyidu, um, tangbudi, kiola toma mebadi, and it seri gutone, and then dukje goje, then to progress. Dukje. And then yibadi, tanda dojinali yibe, changju jungshinti, and it chuye nyangemi kabriya, and it toma chumbras, sigdus, di marebe, di kolte shi Um, the second question I'll take it first because it's easier. Um, yes, it is actually not the original tree, but it is the continuation from the sapling of the original tree. So, in fact, the one in Bodh Gaya now is fairly new. It was brought from Sri Lanka. So, but it's the same continuation. It's the continuation of the same old tree because the, the, the old tree was burned down, unfortunately, during one of those Muslim raids <laughs> in central India. Um, you know, you know, when the Taliban destroyed those two Buddhas in <laughs> Afghanistan, now I was thinking that I thought the Buddhists suffering at the hands of Muslims. I thought that karma was all finished, but obviously there was some part of the karma left. Um, so the first question is complicated. Um, one thing that we have to understand here is what do we mean by scientifically? Okay. Um, sometimes particularly in the West, um, at the popular level, there is a naive assumption that anything that is true can be verified by science. This is not true. Because science is only one way of searching. And science is a very specific way of searching. So, not everything that belongs to the facts can be scientifically demonstrated. Because science, scientific knowledge is defined by a very particular method. And that method includes observation, experimentation, verification, and on top of that, repeat, rep repeatability, and quantification, measurement. So, things like, for example, even the difference between beauty, you know, the qu quality of beauty, how can you scientifically demonstrate that? You cannot measure the quality of beauty. You cannot measure the quality of goodness of someone's heart. But that doesn't mean it's not a fact. Because we have to understand, yes, because sometimes Naively, even among Tibetans, particularly in the monastery, because right now, because of His Holiness' enthusiasm for science and Buddhist dialogue, sometimes there is a naive understanding of what science is. Science is a very powerful method. Science is a very powerful, but scientific knowledge is very powerful, but it is not the only way through which human beings can know something. Okay? So, now, Having explained that, then when we talk about the beginninglessness of our existence, that's not a scientific question. In fact, you know, the scientist, if you ask the physicist what happened before Big Bang, they will say that's not a scientific question. And the reason why they will say this is not a scientific question is because Scientific question must deal with issues that are testable by scientific method. And scientific method uses laws of physics and, you know, measurements. And particularly the laws of physics evolved after the Big Bang. So, when you go before Big Bang, there, is no, there are no laws of physics. If there are no laws of physics, then there is simply no framework by which you can ask questions 
whether something is true or not. So it's beyond the domain of science. That, that's why some of the, the smartest minds in the human family spend their entire life or entire time at universities. They are paid to do nothing but try to get ever more closer to the Big Bang. The first few seconds, the first few milliseconds, first few nanoseconds, they're going closer and closer and closer and closer. The problem is, because as you get closer and closer, the laws break down. And once the laws break down, you have no mathematical formulas to try to understand what is going on. So, um, so if what happens before what has happened before Big Bang is not a scientific question, then how can the beginninglessness of our origin be a scientific question? So th this is the problem because and here what we have to understand is from the scientific point of view the origin of life on Earth is explained along Darwinian lines. So I don't know if the person who asked this question probably has some science background. Who asked this question? Yeah, so you must have some science background. So the, the modern science understands evolution of life on Earth along the Darwinian principle. And Darwinian principle explains how complex life forms can arise from simple life forms. So it goes back. But as to where the first life came about, even there the evolutionary theory does not explain. And from the Buddhist point of view, the complication is not just life, but also consciousness. So the question becomes even more complex. Not only now are we talking about the origin of life, but also we are talking about the origin of consciousness. And then we get into an area where, again, it's not clear whether the question is scientific or not. Now, it is conceivable that, you know, the, the very paradigm of what we call science may change. And then a new methodology, new elements of methodology might come in. Then many of these questions, which are at the moment remain outside the domain of science, may become scientific questions.